Welcome back there, buds. Today I'm going to show you how to restore the finish on this mission style oak rocker. So, as usual, just a quick reminder before we get going, just give me a like, give me a comment, subscribe and follow along with all of our future projects here. Make sure that you ring. That bell to stay notified. Well, let's get to it, huh, Buck? You ready? All right, come on, let's go. To get started here, I just want to give you an overview of the three products, my main go-to products. I sort of learned this process at a restoration shop I worked at for, for years, and uh, we would always use this Howard's Restore Finish. And then the next shop I worked at, I learned this little Windex trick, but I'll show you sort of the process that I developed over the years to get the job done. First of all, you need to know when to use this process because not every piece of furniture is going to work you know, for this process. You might need to just refinish it or do something else with it. So how I begin four out steel wool with diluted Windex. And this is gonna break down a lot of the oils and the grease and the, you know, the grime on top of there prepared for these next two steps. So what I do with this, you spray it directly onto the steel wool and then clean it with the grain. You don't wanna do any kind of swirls because then you just get those little swirl marks. So I like to go very lightly just with the grain and then just you know keep wiping it down, keep wetting it with that. But I never spray this directly onto the piece of furniture because that ammonia will start to eat that finish. But as long as you're just putting it on this and not directly to the furniture, you don't have any problems. And I always dilute it 50-50. So that's how I just do a basic cleanup of the furniture. So once that's done, and that, you know, has had a chance to dry, it's nice and dry, it'll look, usually look pretty hazy. And at that point I know it's, you know, pretty dry, ready to go. So then you always want to use, you know, the next step, get another piece of steel wool, get different rags, clean rags. Always want to be wearing your gloves. So with this step, I don't even know if I really follow the directions on the can. I pretty much just figured out the way that it works best for me. So what I do is just I apply this directly to the steel wool once again, not onto the furniture. You put it on there, and this is basically just stains and solvents, things that eat into the existing furniture, you know, the existing finish, and we get it, you know, nice and looking new again. So after you have put this on the steel wool, rub it once again with the grain. I like to let that sit for 10, 15 minutes, just. Let it just soak in to that finish and to the wood or you know whatever. So then at that point, I'll come along with a clean rag, wipe it down really well. And then to finish up, I actually just started using this in the last few few years. Uh, it's the feed and wax from Howard's. And that's the, the final step of that. And you just put that onto a clean rag and just give it a good wipe down, wait about 15, 20 minutes, and then just wipe everything down. Nice, good wipe down with a clean rag. Just keep using clean rags and it cleans up really nice. Well, I just wanna give you a look at this chair, what it looks like before we start. And going back to what I said before about this wool, you know, I usually judge what process I would use to restore a piece that I wouldn't be fully refinishing. And I like to use this process, but it only works on pieces that still has all of its finish. You can see here on that arm, it's even missing just a little bit, but it could be just a little bit of discoloration because that's where all the the main dirt is from your hands but if you can see on here that finish is still all intact none of it's scraped off or scratched off it's still in decent shape and this is such a nice antique that I don't want to fully refinish it and make it look new I want it to keep some character so 
This is then when I would use the Restorer Finish products. And just to get started here and show you a bit of the beginning process with that Windex, just to get this clean, typically your dirtiest parts of you know a chair would be anywhere you're ever putting your hands or maybe kicking your feet on like down at the bottom or up the top sometimes if your you know hair could touch it oils from that and then uh, maybe the backs of chairs because people will always you know rest rest your hand on the tops of them so those will typically be your dirtiest parts so as you can see on that it's very lots of old grease and grime on there but it'll all come off And I also typically let that just sit and work on that for a minute. And I usually like to leave anywhere there's a, any kind of like a crevice or, you know, quarters of pieces, things like that. Things that would be naturally darker from the aging. Sometimes I like to let that a little bit darker, like in these, like that through tenon. Leave that just a little bit darker, just to keep that character. As you can see already with just that one pass, it's already got a lot of that off of there. Do one more pass to show you what it will look like when it's clean. Then we can compare the two, the two arms there. You can see how clean I get them. And this will also help to remove any, see a lot of like little paint speckles on furniture. I guess if people are repainting their home and you're not uh, moving your furniture around or anything, get a lot of a lot of paint speckles. And this will take that right off too. So as you can see there, I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to really clean that anymore or you can see down in there, we still got some of that black down in there, some of that keeps some of that character. So let's just take a look at this up close and then the old one we'll compare them and just see what the difference is after just the first step of cleaning. So if we look at this side, that is the unclean side. You can still see all the dirt and grime there. Then here's the side that I just cleaned. And that is all ready for step two. So I just have to go over the whole chair like that, and then we'll get to the second step. All right, now I got the whole thing cleaned. It took me about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. That is the most important step. To really take your time, really get all that, you know, the details, the little fine paint dots and everything else that you find, because it can really make a difference between a good job and a great job. Just a few little details that you might skip over. So make sure that you really get it good and clean and then give it one last final wipe down with another clean rag. And then, especially with these oak chairs, they get really old. The edges on a lot of these get uh, pretty splintery and really sharp edges. So what I did next 
And I mean, it, if it's not like that, then you obviously wouldn't have to do that. But with this chair, you know, with these sharp edges, just took a little bit of 400 grit and just knock it down. And that will knock some of the finish off too. So then I'll show you how we take care of all those edges that we knock down. So for this next step, you just want to take whatever stand you're using. I happen to be using that brand today. And you want to get a little stir stick. Get down in the bottom and get some of that pigment out. It's a little bit muddy. You want That's what you want. And then what I do is I just get it onto a rag. Then you just take that rag, come right up that edge. And it colors that all in. Let it dry for a little bit. Maybe hit it again if it needs it, but that's pretty much all there is to that. Well, I kind of jumped ahead of myself there. Started to cheat a little bit. So what I did, instead of just hitting all the corners, since this is such a light finish on this wood, I just went ahead and wiped the whole chair down with that stain. I would never recommend doing that with a Minwax stain or any really oily stain. I don't know. It's I don't I don't use that Minwax. I use the the Verathane or Mohawk or you know a brand like that. It seems like they have more solvents in, and like if you put a Minwax stain over top of the, you know this finish or whatever, it would it would never dry. It would be gummy forever. I mean you can see right there. It's almost dry and this has been sitting maybe five minutes. So we're going to let this continue to dry and then do one last step with that restore finish. But I mean that restore finish is basically stained with some solvents and different things in it. I'm not sure of the the mixture on it but uh, it's it's not far off from a stain so I figure maybe one extra pass just to give it a little bit more color wouldn't be a bad idea so we'll let that dry and give it the give it a hit with that restore finish then and now that that stain has had a chance to set up and dry I'm gonna go ahead and start with the restore finish just rubbing it all on with the grain with a 4 aught steel wool nice and lightly gonna let that cure set up for maybe five to ten minutes give it a good wipe down with a nice clean rag then after that we'll add the feed and wax all right now that that sets up to dry one last little thing that i like to do is just get a small brush dip it down into the can there and I just like to go all around the piece just brush in any of the little you know corners of the wood anywhere that that steel wool couldn't really get it in I'm just gonna just want to make it wet so there aren't any dry spots because they'll stick out like a sore thumb well now that that has had a chance to dry up a bit it's been about 10 minutes or so you can really start to see on some of these flat areas here when it starts to dry that's when I like to start wiping it down so we'll get it wiped down and go from there After I give that a good wipe down, before we do the feed and wax, I like to just make sure that we got all the fuzzies off. So I like to just take the air gun and just give it a good spray down. This will also help to dry.
And then one final wipe down with another clean rag just to get anything that might have just blown out of the pores of the wood or the crevices or anything. Now, crack a beer, pet bucko. We probably want to wait at least 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. I think that's what the can says. And then we'll do the final feed and wax. Okay, Doctor Buds. After drinking 17 beers, it's finally dry. So I just like to take this, just give it a good shake. And just a, a note: this isn't food safe, so don't uh, use this to oil anything that you might be eating from. Just like to put a good amount on a rag. And just squish it all up. Then just wipe it down. And this uh, kind of smells like, I think it's like lemon oil, beeswax. A couple different oils. So I especially like to use this Maybe to oil up, maybe an older piece. You know, if it was sitting in a basement forever and it just has that musty smell that will not go away. This is gonna get rid of that. And this is about as much. You wanna get it on there nice and wet, nice and heavy. Then we let that sit for another 20 minutes then wipe it all down with a nice fresh clean rag and then I usually like to let it maybe sit a couple minutes more because sometimes it can just start to seep out of some of the some of the wood a little more and then just give it one final wipe down that's it now about 30 minutes later let's give it all a good wipe down Well, buds, here's another one done. As always, if you like what you see, give it a like, give it a comment, subscribe, follow along, stick around to see all the before and after pictures and all that. Now I got myself a nice old rocking chair to practice my claw hammer on. And uh, stay tuned, we'll do another video, make a new seat for it. But obviously at the moment, not many stores open that sell fabric, so might have to wait a minute. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. practice the banjo. <laughs>